murders at Karlov Manor in Chicago. And Jesse did start that tournament, as I mentioned yesterday, at 8-0. He's on top of the standings here once again. It's 6-1. And, and David, his uh, teammate, not too far behind, with Arne Hushenbeth splitting the difference. Fantastic. If three of those testing team partners can make the top eight, that would just be an incredible result for them. Let's take a look at our head-to-head -head here for round number eight. We've got Ryan Condon on Quintorius Combo coming up, as well as Arne Hushenbeth on Rakdos Vampires. Uh, Ryan Condon currently sitting at five and two. Arne, like we just saw, sitting at six and one. Ryan, let's get to meet him. Started playing in 2009. Loves Limited. Says their favorite format is, quote, a complicated seal pool, which I absolutely love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> and favorite movie, Past Lives. What a great, uh, great choice for favorite movie there for Ryan. Moving on, on over to Arne on Rakdos Vampires, your 2021 Call Time Championship winner said in an interview earlier today that he hasn't had a big win in three years, so he really wants to prove that he's still got it here in this tournament, doing well on that goal so far. Favorite movie, The Dark Knight. Also a great choice. Great movie choices. Both of them. I love it. Let's take a look at the decks here. Cedric starting off with Ryan. Let us start things off with Contorious Combo. This one's a little bit of a weird one here, but the goal is to get uh, Contorious onto the battlefield. And once you do that, you kind of minus the Discover 4, hit a couple of Spark Doubles and Clever Impersonators, keep doing that. The Static Trigger will, of course, occur, and that will kill the opponent. The problem sometimes is that you draw too many of these clones and you're not able to get the win that way. But assuming things go the way that you'd like them to, this is effectively a combo deck that only needs one card to win the game. It's such a cool deck. I love that Garuda to a full four. <laughs> that is awesome. Let's take a look at Rakdos Vampires, the big bad of this tournament, Carmen. And this is a deck that we've been seeing a lot of. It's kind of a, a newer deck that popped out at Murder, Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor. And we're seeing a lot of vampires just incidentally adding up to a normal mid-range deck with this sort of ability to have an almost combo-esque kill of its own in Soren Imperius Bloodlord cheating out an early copy of Vein Ripper as early as the third turn. Yep, so let's see if Rakdos Vampires can keep doing as well as it has been this tournament, or if Quintoria's designed to stop it will do its thing. It's round number eight, two left before our cut to the top eight. Take it away, Cedric. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome to round number eight of Arena Championship 5. Cedric Phillips, Carmen Klumperens here in the booth, bringing you another round of Explorer action. We're going to watch Ryan Condon on Quintorius Combo against Arne Hushenbeth playing Rakdos Vampires, the big bat of the format. Hushenbeth off to another wonderful start in a tournament. Six and one, Carmen only lost in the first round of competition. And look at this. We've seen Condon also lose twice on camera now, but those are their only two losses. So this is a deck that's a little bit off the beaten path. It's able to target this Rakdos Vampires deck, and this is someone who is doing a lot of winning as long as we're not watching. Uh, yes, this is true. This is true. Uh, for Condon, it has been kind of an under-the-radar performance, still very much in top eight contention. And this Quintorious combo deck, not known as one of the top decks of the format, but that could all change after this tournament, and certainly after this round, if Ryan is able to pick up a win against a great player in Hushinbeth. So these players are going to take a look at their opening hands. Arna's opening hand, not particularly good. This one's okay, insofar as it has Soren plus Vein Ripper. so Soren Tell could take place here, but no disruption, no thought sees, no early pressure. I'm not sure if this is a hand, Carmen, that Arna should keep. Yeah, it's really tough, right? Because there is a point where you do need that sort of trifecta of lands, disruption, and a clock in order to outrace any sort of combo deck that is just going to go super far over the top of what you're doing. And we can see that Hushinbeth has elected to keep this hand on the back of the fact that it, this is the fastest clock that his deck can produce. Well, I'm going to keep this hand. We're going to see how things go. Blood Crypt enters the battlefield tap. That'll start things here in round number eight. And it looks like Condon kept a hand that doesn't have the Quintorius, but it does just have a lot of cards, which is really nice, where one of the plans that we can see this Rakdos deck employ is basically trying to use cards like Thoughtseize, cards like Liliana of the Veil, to just reduce the number of resources both players have. And when your deck is full of five and six mana cards, you have to hit all your land drops. Duress is a very timely draw here for Hushinbeth. We're not going to see it this turn. We may see it next turn, but for now, it is Sorentel. 
Vein Ripper is going to enter the battlefield. It's huge. It's a 6-5. Very difficult to kill, of course, because you do need a creature to sacrifice from the Lord, which Condon's deck does have some difficulty doing. Not sure if this hand was a keepable one on the draw, but good enough on the play here for Lucian Death. Right. This is the spot where there isn't anything really fancy going on, but the, this is a lot of pressure. Faces the place. Beanstalk Giant. More importantly, Fertile Footsteps is going to get a basic planes. And now here is a Leyline Binding. That is going to solve the Soren problem. Vein Ripper, a little bit more difficult to solve. Let's go for the Throat of the Draw. And here is the Duress. The Duress is going to be a swing and a miss. Garuda, Clever Impersonator, and just lands is what Hushinbeth does. See, he'll attack there for six. Blood Crypt, tap, go for the Throat of the Ready, and pass the turn back. That go for the Throat, also an incredible sight for Sore Eyes if you're Hushin Beth in general, because the sort of backup Gyruda plan leans on being able to clone the Gyruda over and over with the clever impersonators of the world. Speaking of clever impersonator, here is that shapeshifter. That's going to come onto the battlefield and copy Vein Ripper. So that is a solve to the problem, I suppose. And this is an almost funny game of cat and mouse where each player can sacrifice their own Vein Ripper to pay for the word cost of the opposing one, but... Really, that's something that Condon wants to happen. Oh, yeah. Condon wouldn't mind that at all. <laughs> you are definitely right about that. When your deck's full of five, six, and in this case, with Beanstalk Giant's case, even seven mana cards, a top deck war is exactly the kind of game you want to be playing. A Preacher of the Schism, the draw here for Hushin Beth. And it looks like Arne will be deploying that Vampire Cleric and... Maybe simply passing the turn back. The one unknown card here for Condon is that copy of Leyline Binding that was drawn last turn that looks like it's going to be played this turn. All right, now Condon's basically trying to figure out, is it worth just trading off the two Vein Rippers here to reduce what's on the table? And it looks like that Leyline just took care of that Preacher of the Schism. So we're going to head back Condon's way now. Picked up a copy of Beanstalk Giant for the turn. Oh, I wonder if these caverns can't cast Gyruda. Yeah, this might be slightly awkward here. Ooh. Well, here is Fertile Footsteps using the caverns to help cast it alongside that Zagoth Triome. So that's going to get a basic island, which of course enters the battlefield untapped. And then Karuga will be added to the grip. Well, this is that grind the turn. And this is that grindy game plan we were talking about a moment ago where casting this Karuga could just gas Condon right back up with three more cards from everything on the battlefield. It absolutely can. Now here's an interesting draw step here in this Soren. What exactly is the plan with this planeswalker? Because it's the best thing to do on the turn. Maybe it's just to cheat in another vein ripper? I would guess just putting in another vein ripper is the thing that Hushambeth's going to be happiest doing. So you this can see I'm thinking, is rolling up Soren and just attacking for seven better? Interesting spot. Uh, doesn't seem like one that Arne has been in before, but who can blame him? Right, this is just such an interesting one. So Vayne Ripper is going to get cheated into play, and now will the first one Head into the red zone. Oh, this is tough. And you can kind of see him doing the math. You know, there's the Karuga in the opponent's hand. So, what do the games look like that you win if you're not attacking? And that's a lot of what he's thinking about from here because making sure you understand the ranges is important, right? This is basically a win in for top eight for him. Yeah. Yep. Remember, we only have two rounds left to go. Six yesterday, and then three rounds today before we make our cut to top eight. So seven wins is, uh, that's a sweet spot. Right, so when this basically could put Hushambath straight into the top eight, you want to make sure that you aren't just, you know, end of the day, maybe you miss and you think, oh God, if I just held my blocker back. Well, Vein Ripper's coming in and they're going to trade. So we're going to get some triggers here. I think just a moment. Uh, let's make it four of them. Looks like this was an expected outcome for Hushambeth. 
And now a forest to draw. So it could be Garuda time. Now if the uh, if the top of the deck is kind, Carmen, uh, it could be game over, I believe. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that can happen from here. It could hit clones and keep going. It could hit Trumpeting Carnosaur and even just start the Cascade combo. Or it could hit Dusk Legion sell it. Mm, yes, this is the second time that we have seen Garuda be quite poor here for content. Jeez. This is I mean, we... why I love Garuda in good ways and bad ways. It's actually just super exciting. Uh, anything can happen. Now, one thing we know is going to happen is Vanderpur is going to come across for six in the air. So there's six. Garuda going to bite the dust. I think you might be right about that. So Trigger puts you down to four. Blood Tithe Harvester, I think that's throw that at your face. And then, of course, that's going to be the three damage from Lightning Helix style effect, and then Vein Ripper's trigger as well. So, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Anybody get beat this vampire deck? Huh? Not Garuda. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. So, Arnie Ushinbeth is going to win game number one here over Ryan Condon. Rakdos, Vampires, up a game over Victorious Combo. You see the sideboard options here for both players. Carmen, take it away. So the big thing I'd expect to come in from the Quintorius combo deck is just copies of Consecrate Consume. The Consume half is able to check all of the different big creatures that Hush and Beth can put on the table, keep that clock in check a little bit better through Vein Ripper's ward ability. And over on Hush and Beth's side, you're just going to see things where he's basically switching up his disruption suite. We see Fatal Pushes hit the bench. We see Liliana the Veil, Duress, more hand disruption coming into the deck. This plays into Hushambeth just trying to reduce the total number of resources both players have access to. Condon does need a, a pretty high number of resources to actually get the game going. We saw last game had six lands in play, still couldn't even cast Gyruda, and had that waiting a turn on Gyruda ended up being the make or break. That was a bit of an issue. Now, Garuda has just not been particularly nice to Condon in these camera matches. And that opening hand wasn't good that Ryan was taking a look at. And that uh, appears to be the case once again. This isn't the best of the bunch. As you see for Hush and Beth, a Duress, a Thought Season, a Blood Tide Harvester is plenty fine. And as you know, Carmen, discard gets much better when the opponent mulligans to five. Oh, and this is so tough for anyone who's a fan of Condens because keeping Leyland Binding doesn't feel that great whenever Cavern of Souls is one of your lands. Putting back Carnosaur doesn't feel very great because that's really your only gas at this point. But you need Beanstalk Giants because, like we were saying before, you need lands. There's just so many cards that you need to keep here, but you got to put two back. Well, a couple of cards have gone back here. It looks like we're going to kick things off with an Overgrown Tomb, another discard spell there in Thoughtseize. We're going to see Blood Crypt enter the battlefield untapped. Now here is Thoughtseize. So there's the hand of a Trumpeting Carnosaur and multiple copies of Beanstalk Giant. The more important half of that card, of course, being Fertile Footsteps. And you can see here, Arnie's basically trying to consider, do I want to go after the ramp spells? Looks like the answer is yes. Yeah. Because the deck does need a lot of mana to operate. And Trumpeting Carnosaur, you know, doing its thing is not really all that scary as you see Duress the draw. Looks like it'll be another copy of Thoughtseize that Hushin Beth is going to cast. Mm, just kidding. And here the thing he's thinking about is if he wants to develop pressure and just get this Blood Tithe Harvester onto the battlefield. These Duresses are not worth that much. All right, and you see that he went to second main phase in some ways. This was seeing if Condon had top decked a copy of Herd Migration. Mm, sure, okay, okay. A little arena trick there, huh? Yep, if Condon had priority, that would have communicated that they had something that they could have done in their hand. It automatically go into main phase two, and that they did not. Beanstalk Giant, number two, headed to the graveyard, Mutavolt. Gonna be the land for the turn. Spark double draw. Condon can only pass the turn back. Another discard spell drawn here for <laughs> <laughs> makes a little bit of a smile there. Use your words. Don't say discard spell. That card is not discarding anything. Uh, it wants to be. Well, here, yeah, it's being discarded. Oh, there it open. is. How That's a that? discard ability. That's right. Uh, a couple of lands have been drawn here. A third mutavolt. Second mutavolt will join the battlefield. This one's gonna fire up that one. Gonna come across here for five little Death. Two duresses, a third copy of Mutavolt. 
and a red black pathway is what RNA is working with. And we can see RNA really just identifying here that pressure is important. We saw turn two really thought a lot about do I want to get this harvester on the table? How do I actually get this game over? And it helps that the top of the library isn't being too kind to Hush and Beth here. Well, this is a pretty fast clock, all things told. These mutavolts and blood tithe harvesters are coming across. Sacred Foundry, you see the affirming head nod there from Condon, which is it's a land that, of course, needs to be, you need to pay some life to actually make work, unfortunately, here for Ryan. So that's Sacred Foundry. We'll enter the battlefield untapped. Condon's going to fall down to six. Mutavolts, plural, are going to get fired up. I think all three of them are going to get into the red zone alongside this blood tithe harvester. And even though Trumpeting Carnosaur could be channeled to do its thing, that's simply not going to be good enough here. As Arne Husenbeth, off the power of Soren, Vein Ripper, and Mutable, going to win this game and match two games to zero. That's win number seven. And in